we can hear you. No issues. Uh, welcome to everybody for this um, uh, ECMO training course by ECMO Society of India. My name is uh, Riyan. Um, I work in, as Dr. Panayi mentioned, I work in Narayana Vidalaya in Bangalore. And I'm also the head of ECMO and I also direct the, I'm the director of the pediatric intensive care. Sorry, today I have uh, a, a slight cold. So uh, as, yesterday I couldn't even uh, produce any sound. I'm going to be talking today about an introduction to all of you before for this course and uh, for ECMO and uh, the various indications for different age groups. Uh, no disclosures. I don't know how many of you understand this. Uh, this is the basics of uh, initiation of ECMO. Whenever I get a call every day to initiate ECMO, the first thing that goes into my mind is, the question is, is it reversible? So unless it's reversible, the indication is not a good indication. Next question I ask myself is bridge to where? You can see this bridge. Is it a bridge to recovery? Is it a bridge to transplant? Is it a bridge to cardiac surgery? Is it a bridge to decision making? When you first start an ECMO program, sometimes it also unofficially becomes rich to declaration, which is common when you start a new program. Then over a period of time, someone comes out of ECMO and he recovers. And that's when, when ECMO non-believers become believers. And the third thing I always look at is, <clears throat> what is the exit strategy? How do I get this patient when? And how do I get him to conventional medical therapy, maximum or moderate to ma maximum conventional medical therapy so that the intensive care then can get this patient out of the ventilator or inotropes or any mechanical devices other than the ECMO is attached to the patient. So what is ECMO and why do we need ECMO? I'm going to talk about indications for adult respiratory ECMO cardiac failure, sorry, adult respiratory failure, cardiac failure, indications for eCPR, a note on pediatric indications and neonatal respiratory failure indications. Before I start, uh, ECMO usually has got um, three different, uh, categorized into three different age groups. One is the adult and who's uh, anyone at above 18. And then is the pediatrics, which is below one month and uh, less than 18 years. And then one is, and another one is neonatal, which is less than one month. And depending on what type of issue it is, respiratory failure or cardiac failure, it's again classified. Thank you, Adanta, critical care. Huh? Emerge critical care seminar last month. So, I didn't. Yeah. I'm very poor in attending. <laughs> I don't like to be very honest. All right. Prasant, one of the mandatory what yeah. all things you wanted? One now will put keeper in flush. Yes, doc. Please mute Your everybody. Your name is also Chris, no? No, no. Rudy. Are you the Rudy? Rudy. Prashant Raj Bhotle. Yes. Can you mute, please? Yeah, thank you. So the other other thing is, uh, other thing it's classified as respiratory failure, cardiac failure, and eCPR. I'll come to it in a bit. So what is ECMO? It is, an, it is a use of an artificial lung, a membrane, located outside the body, so it's extracorporeal. It puts oxygen into the blood, so it's oxygenation, and it continuously pumps this blood into and around the body. As you can see in this diagram, it is a child with a cannula in the neck. This is the deoxygenated blood coming out into the pump. From the pump, it goes into the oxygenator, gets oxygenated, comes out at the bottom of the oxygenator, goes back in into the patient. Here, the IJV is the uh, venous cannula and the, the uh, arterial cannula is in the common carotid. Why do we need ECMO? See, like you see this child, he, he's got so many devices attached to him. 
we just have one big problem. We cannot deliver oxygen to the peripheral tissues. Most of the times, this is the problem. We cannot deliver oxygen. That's why we need ECMO. So when you start, when you put the patient on ECMO, this patient doesn't need these gadgets, these supports, which are sometimes, which many a times saves lives, but in, in the bargain of saving lives also has its own delirious effects. Like there might be volume trauma or barotrauma to the lungs. There might be peripheral vasoconstriction causing ischemia to the gut, ischemia to the brain, ischemia to the limbs and causing multi-organ failure. We all know this. So the blood, blood pumps in a cardiac output rich with hemoglobin. It comes with an arterial oxygen content of 100. Tissue demand and oxygen consumption extracts 20% and our venous oxygen content which goes back into the lungs is 80%. This is normal physiology. The DO2 VO2 here is 5 is to 1. This is a beautiful figure by father of ECMO Dr. Barlett, this is to show you that, you can see my pointer, you and I are listening to this lecture, we have, maybe we are over here, we have a 5 to 1 DO2 VO2. If we are sweating or have a fever, we might become hypermetabolic and we might still maintain 5 to 1. But if you start getting DO2 VO2 imbalance and go towards 3, Below three, you start collecting acid. When you collect acid, when will, when will your urine output come down? It all de 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 depends on your physiology. It is very difficult to predict when you are below three to one, when you are monitoring your lactates or your urine output. So a good sense of where the patient stands, a good sense of examination and tests, all put together and if you can predict when a patient is below 3 to 1 DO2 VO2 ratio or is heading below 3 to 1 DO2 VO2 ratio or is in likelihood of having a cardiac arrest for sure, then these are the indications broadly physiologically for ECMO. Constantly there is a, also a a debate about VA versus VV ECMO. I want to simplify it to the audience today. All, all patients with cardiac failure fall on the right side here will need veno arterial ECMO for heart and lung support. If you have a pure respiratory failure, you just need veno venous ECMO. If you have some cardio pulmonary failure, that is respiratory failure with cardiac failure. Example, ARDS with septic shock. ARDS is multi-organ failure. Then on and needing higher inotropic support or vasopressors. Then you also need to support the heart and lung, which is all, which is we know at ECMO. Of course, there are some hybrids after this, but this is for a basic understanding of what. Uh, the big debate about veno venous and veno arterial ECMO. What are the possible configurations in India before we go to the indications? The considerations, configurations, the one in very small newborns or in uh, children less than three months, you need trans cervical VA ECMO, which the one I showed you. In, uh, in, in adults who have respiratory failure purely and need veno venous ECMO, the most common configuration. There are others, but the most common is femorojugular veno venous can, uh, ECMO. In, in adults who have, and even in children above 30 kilos, who have to be supported veno arterially, but want to be, has to be done peripherally, can go peripheral veno arterial ECMO, femorofemoral. And in adults and children who have heart, heart surgery or who need ECPR for or have septic shock and need higher flows, then the configuration becomes central VA ECMO where the right atrium and the iotas are cannulated. 
the chest is left open. In some cases, the, the, the chest is also closed and the lines are tunneled. These are the possible most common configuration in India. There are more, but I do not want to confuse you a lot at this point of time. What is the basic difference between veno venous and veno arterial? Veno venous can give moderate amount of oxygen delivery. It is a cardiovascular effect in decreasing preload and after, increasing afterload is negligible. Here, it has no direct support of systemic circulation except that in a respiratory failure, it improves oxygenation, brings down the pulmonary venous resistance, improves the RV cardiac output. Uh, but in veno-arterial, there is partial to complete effect on the systemic circulation. And in veno-venous also, there is no effect on the pulmonary circulation. Whereas in veno-arterial ECMO, it bypasses the pulmonary circulation and decreases the pulmonary arterial pressures. This is a... This is probably the first uh, article you should read for this course. Uh, it is the guidelines for Veno Venus ECMO from the ELSO uh, organization, that is the extra, extra corporal life support organization to which we submit data, take help, and also this course is also endorsed by them. They're a world organization trying to support ECMO in far and wide. Coming to the uh, indications for respiratory failure, ECMO and respiratory failure, if any anybody has got more than one of the following, that is an hypoxic respiratory failure, PO to FI ratio less than 80, and all medical management uh, has been done and there is absence of uh, contraindications, and a trial of prone has been tried, hypercapnic respiratory failure despite ventilation, uh, common um, common example is also ARDS and sometimes even bronchial asthma in status. Ventricular support is a bridge to lung transplant or a primary graft dysfunction following lung transplant. If more than one of this is present, it becomes a direct indication. Relative contraindications are central nervous system hemorrhage, significant central nervous system injury, irreversible central nervous system pathology, any systemic bleeding or contraindications to anticoagulation, immunosuppression, older age. Um, it is very debatable what is old age. Uh, nowadays, patients also don't like to hear us telling that he is old. Uh, mechanical ventilation for more than seven days with a P-plat of more than 30 centimeters of water and FI out of more than 90. So this is a landmark trial in 2009 where they randomized controlled during the H1N1 pandemic in the, U, in the UK, in Leicester. They randomized them to conventional uh, ARDS uh, management in a ventilator and or put them on uh, SWAN. In, so in, these, in, in this landmark study, they have either, other than the indication, they have used something called the Murray score, which sometimes, which this, is not, this has not been standardized or uh, vetted, but it was used in this study where they use different parameters. I will not go through each one of them. Basically, they look at the PO to FI ratio, chest X-ray, PEEP, and compliance, and average, and the average of all the scores. Anybody above 2.5 of average score, uh, there's a high likelihood requiring ECMO is what they mentioned, what they used in the, in the CSER trial. But this is just a guide uh, in one of the trials. In another trial called the EOLO trial, they used a definition for severe ARDS as pure to FI ratio of less than 50 millimeters of mercury for three hours or less than 80 for more than six hours as an oxidation criteria. And as an hypercapnia criteria, they used a arterial blood pH of less than 7.25 or a partial pressure of uh, um, arterial carbon dioxide of at least 60 for more than six hours. This is what they used in another trial in 2020, 21. Uh, this is a group from Paris. So I'm just mentioning you this as these are just an adjuvant guides for you to help. We, we also kind of use a clinical fragility scale, which is never mentioned in an ECMO, in any ECMO literature, but just so that when we have very elderly patient, we get an, a little bit of idea and makes us easy to tell our colleagues and sometimes even patients 
that why we should not offer ECMO. This is a REV score. I put it here is because you should not confuse REV score. This was used in Alfred and in, in along with ELSO, they developed this. This is not as an indication, but this is for prediction of survival of adult patients who are already on ECMO for respiratory failure. I put it here so that none of you get confused and think that this is also a score for indication. This is not a score for indication. So the common indications in adults is ARDS, uh, isnophilic pneumonia, severe asthma, diffuse alveolar hemorrhage, thoracic trauma with lung contusion, severe inhalation injuries, large bronchopleural fistula, and peri-lung transplant. Indications for cardiac failure, there is not many uh, uh, papers being very clear. I come from a very large cardiac failure unit. We do almost 140 ECMOs in adults and children a year. And in that, we, we, in, in that, we look at uh, signs of low cardiac output, lactate levels of more than 2.8, central venous pressure, oxygen saturation of less than 65, hypotension with systolic blood pressure of less than 90. And I would add another thing. If the team thinks this child has a very high likelihood to have a sudden cardiac arrest, then also he becomes an indication for cardiac ECMO. Now coming to eCPR, this is the 2020 um, expert consensus between various organizations, the European, the ELSO, the Society of Thoracic Surgeons and the, and the Trauma Society for consensus on post-cardiotomy extra life uh, eCPR in adult patients. They said that uh, application uh, can it uh, ECMO can be used in uh, patients who uh, are unsuccessful to have a spontaneous ROSC. They defined spontaneous ROSC is de determined by that to have occurred when chest compression, sustained ROSC is uh, supposed to have happened when chest compressions are not required for 20 minutes following cardiac arrest. So the indications may, may be uh, witnessed arrest arrest to first CPR of less than five minutes, initial rhythm of VF, pulse VT and PEA, arrest to ECMO flow less than 60 minutes, that is low flow interval, entitled CO2 of more than 10 during CPR before cannulation, intermittent ROSC is happening or this recurrent VF in and out of uh, arrest, signs of life during conventional CPR may be positive predictor factor of survival, the absence of previously known life limiting comorbidities of any organs, and there is uh, less and indication that there, there is no more than mild aortic valve regurgitation. Uh, these were the indications by the same paper and also ELSO on eCPR. They also added age uh, less than 70 years, which is again debatable. Coming to pediatrics, uh, the, the respiratory indications are almost the same, but in pediatrics, there is something else called oxygen index, which we will I will show you what it is. And in cardiac, uh, in pediatrics, we use it sometimes for preoperative stabilization of TAPVCs and uh, atrial switch operations before the operation, the failure to wean from regular bypass, low cardiac output syndrome, any medical cardiac failure like myocarditis, cardiomyopathy, any intractable arrhythmias, and also of course uh, in hospital cardiac arrest. Oxygen index is nothing but map into FiO2 into 100 by PO2. When your oxygen index is more than 40 for 4 hours or more than 20 for 24 hours, it really raises some alarm bills. Coming to the guidelines for neonates, neonates are different set of uh, different set of age group. They have their own issues uh, physiologically uh, in their heart, in their lungs, etc etc so when you have more than one of the following that is inadequate tissue oxygen delivery despite maximal therapy severe hypoxic respiratory failure with a po2 of less than 40 oxygen index in a sustained elevation which i mentioned and severe pulmonary hypertension with evidence of right heart failure or left ventricular dysfunction then it is we can consider neonatal respiratory ECMO. so without uh, they should not have Lethal chromosomal abnormalities, trisomy 21, which is the Down syndrome, is okay. Severe brain damage. Uh, if you have a uh, significant intraventricular bleed, bleed, 
uh, in a cranial ultrasound, if you have grade three or grade four bleed, uncontrollable bleeding, vessel size is too small for cannulation. Usually happens in less than two kilos. The neck vessels are very small to cannulate. Relative contraindications are some irreversible organ damage, less than two kilos, like I mentioned, and less than 34 week uh, of uh, period of gestation. Common indications and one of the best indications for ECMO in all age groups is meconema situation syndrome, almost a 95 to 100% survival, a PPHN about a survival of 90%, congenital diaphragmatic a poor survival of about 60%, neonatal sepsis and RDS. So coming to uh, finish off my talk, there are the 10 commandments uh, I would like to tell any newcomer. So always consider ECMO early. I did not say initiate early. I said consider early. Do not use the lungs. When are you, you are in lung failure and you have rested the lungs, do not bang the lungs and cause volume trauma and barotrauma. Know your circuit and know your cannula. Very important. There are there are there are there are algorithms to show you. There are charts to show you of what age, what what size cannula you need for which configuration of ECMO. Understand the oxygen delivery, like I mentioned. Minimize sedation. Think about taking the tube out, think about extubation, think about walking, think about uh, 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 exercising on ECMO, think about yoga on ECMO, think about music on ECMO. So minimize sedation. ECMO wean not too early, not too late, and always recognize futility and back off. It takes a village when you're setting up an ECMO program. You cannot learn alone in your institution and do ECMO. You need a whole team. Review our work, celebrate your successes because one on one of two only survive. So when they survive, you please celebrate them, celebrate those successes. So you convert more ECMO non-believers to believers, partner with the ELSO to take help from them. And uh, I, I would conclude there. Take care. I'm happy to take any questions.